I, I just cannot predict the future. And uh, the games, they've kicked off. Yeah. And it's a French defence ah. from the world champion. Yeah, and Magnus does this from time to time, not normally uh, in the biggest clashes, uh, not normally when he wants to stay solid. It's often when he wants to try and win games, the French defence. And this will be a surprise to Kukesh, you think? I think this will be not ma a massive surprise. I think Gukesh has come prepared for this. Uh, I'm very curious what he chooses. Just very quickly, though, that last graphic, there was a certain number in there that spooked me. Giri was only 1677. Uh, it was a typo. I there must have been 2677. Oh. <laughs> I was, that was a quick improvement over two years. Um, yeah, there was a little typo in there for everybody watching. But, I'm impressed uh, you noticed. Right. Yeah, I'm mean, attention to detail. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> and meanwhile, one of the main lines of the French defence, uh, the name of this, is this the classical variation? Yes. I think. <laughs> this is actually a Ginger GM special, by oh. the way. If Simon was here, he'd, have, he'd be licking his chops because uh, <laughs> he's had this position a bunch of times, especially with a quick A6, B5. I think that's right up his alley. Yeah, he's been playing it since he was a teenager himself, yeah. Simon Williams, uh, from the black side. Yeah, I thought you waited a little bit there until White committed the king. I've actually played this with Black. I think I played this against Kostenyuk in uh, Isle of Man. You can check that, you know, see if that's in the database. Yeah, as far as I know, this is still quite a well-known position, it's still very theoretical. Um, the one thing you don't want to do, um, as you guys alluded to, is to castle the king at the moment with White. You definitely don't want to go queenside because that's where Black's pawns are pushing. You might castle there later, mm -hmm. but only when the centre has clarified itself. Um, so here, as white, you tend to play a bit of a waiting game. You tend to see what black is going to do first uh, before deciding which side to put your king on. This is, again, as far as I know, one of the most popular moves. Pawn takes pawn. Just, again, asking Magnus Carlsen, are you going to take this pawn back with the black dark squared bishop? Are you going to take with your knight? Once you have a bit more information, then you can decide when to castle with white. OK, he takes with the bishop. Magnus, normally this isn't a good idea. Normally you want to keep dark squared bishops on the board as black because black's light squared bishop, if you looked at it uh, on the c8 square, it's just locked in, doesn't have a great future. But because black is a bit cramped in the middle of the board, you have to just trade off pieces. You need a bit more space, uh, otherwise your pieces will be fighting for the same squares. So um, still very standard stuff here. And now I think white can castle. White's queen can also move. Uh, I've seen that one before. Uh, a bunch of options here for Gukesh, but both players have done their homework, clearly. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you're right, uh, just sliding the queen two squares across to attack the knight is the most popular move. Uh, this one was uh, number two in the list of choices. Mm -hmm. So White just brings his bishop out, and he's keeping Magnus guessing now, Gukesh. Uh, Magnus as black, he's going to be thinking, OK, are you going to go king side? Are you going to go queen side? Which way are you going with the white king? And uh, it's, it's hard to formulate a plan as black as well. You have to make that decision. Does your king stay in the centre? Does your king go to its kind of usual home over there on the right? Um, it's lots of strategic choices which will have long-term consequences. Um, usually white has a small advantage in these types of positions because if you look at the centre, white has this pawn on e5, the furthest advanced pawn out of any. Um, that clamps down on black's position. Also the dark squares. White has pretty decent control over the dark squares in the centre. Yeah. Um, black brings his queen out. A waiting yeah. game. Definitely a waiting game, and I just wanted to add one very important point to why also white is um, slightly better. I mean, take a look at the light square bishop that black has. It's bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is always a point of contention between players who play the Karakhan, like me, and the French defence, and it's like a running joke. You know, and we have all sorts of uh, kind of memes going on about this uh, bishop, like... There's, a, there's one that kind of goes, you know, how can you tell? Well, actually, because there's all these openings and they go, oh, French defence is missing. And uh, there we see the pawn attacking. And uh, everyone goes, well, where is, where is French defence? And uh, some Karakhan goes, wait, wait, wait for it. The light squared bishop is bad. And the French defence suddenly appears from nowhere and goes, no, no, no. I think you'll find it's a chess bear joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm going on about it. I, mean, I, I found it very funny. That's the big difference, right, between the French defence and most openings. You, know, yeah. you just have one bad piece. And I think this is Magnus' oh. idea to try and trade off his worst piece. And uh, I mean, he can play it now, for example. He yeah. does. So uh, that's why we talk about bad pieces, because if you figure out which pieces are your worst, then you can come up with easy plans. And he wants to trade it off for White's very strong bishop in the centre. Okay. If the bishops disappear, 
Black has a very healthy position. The knight can jump into the centre. Black has gained a lot of space on this side of the board, and because the centre's blocked, he doesn't actually need to rush to castle his king. Another thing we've seen from Magnus in recent months, he definitely doesn't rush to castle. Mm -hmm. Keeps his opponent guessing. So should Gukesh now take that bishop, or should he wait? Oof, good question. Um, I guess you can take, or... There is a bit of pressure on this bishop. It's attacked by Black's knight and bishop, so I guess you could... I was going to say just defend it, but Gukesh, he's a wow. very aggressive player uh, when he wants to be, and he's pushing forward. He's going for the Black King already, uh, so he's trying to open up lines. The White Queen and Rook both sit on this F-file, so if by pushing this pawn forward, he's trying to open things up. And isn't this the, the strategy that's, that's given Prague much success against Magnus, just attacking him? Yeah, and it worked for Eric Geisi yesterday. Eric Geisi could have gone on the defence, that was fine, but he went on the attack and it worked. He beat Magnus. Huh. What do you think, Lawrence? Strong move? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a positive move. It, mm -hmm. It's a move that says, I'm not a, really afraid, I'm not going to be too passive against you. Because that's where Magnus really does the damage, when you're overly scared of him. Mm. When you're on the front foot against Magnus, mm -hmm. you've got all the chances. He still has to find accurate moves. Now, of course, he's very capable of finding those moves, but he's still human after all. And this is the move you really want to play if you can play it in a French. I love the move. I don't know objectively how... Well, I mean, the bar says it's slightly better for black, but I... I don't know about that. Yeah, it's yeah. just too random. It's also theory. Is it's it? It's been played yeah. before. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, people like Laurent Frezenet playing it, ah. Matthias Bertel, a Polish grandmaster, Master Vasilis, uh, a Demetrius, a Greek grandmaster, and uh, Robert Fontaine, so another French grandmaster. So, yeah, everyone is, uh, well, challenging black, because I guess you have to, because if black is, is just trading off those light squared bishops, then he's kind of maximised absolutely everything that he wants from the opening. And Yavanka, so pawn takes pawn was played by Magnus. Fair enough, capturing a pawn. Has this been uh, seen before? And if so, what, what kind of scores are we uh, used to seeing? Does white win a lot of games here, black? OK, so here are the stats. So pawn takes pawn, very much the top move. And uh, it's a 37% win rate for whites hey. and 44% for black. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, the stats are not in white's favour. No. Yeah, maybe Gukesh has other ideas. Maybe he hasn't analysed those numbers. I mean, I guess white clear can take the pawn back. Or I was about to suggest as well, this knight move very natural. Uh, now you've temporarily sacrificed a pawn, but black now has an isolated pawn in the centre. Yeah, if you can capture this one, you'll gain time as well against the black queen. Very tense. Wow. Let's go back to the players. Uh, I like Gukesh's opening choice, though. He's not scared of Magnus and just defending that pawn mm -hmm. with the Black Knight. Let's also take a look at their aim chess, head-to-head uh, -head stats, Gukesh and Magnus Carlsen. We do know Magnus Carlsen is fantastic in the end game, but Gukesh, definitely not bad himself. And I actually noticed he's uh, quite close to Magnus on most uh, stats. How sensational is that for a 16-year-old? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's very promising signs. Uh, I guess the biggest difference is just the end game, but also the resourcefulness. That's something that will come with age for Gukesh. End games, you'll have more experience, you'll study them more the older you get. But also resourcefulness, you get a bit trickier. Uh, mm. The older you get, you get a bit more wily and um, you learn how to set practical problems for your opponent in tough positions. So, yeah, impressive. What do you think, Lawrence? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, to play like this at 16 is, is just... Uh... It, it's 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 mind blowing. It's uh, yeah. He's just as we saw in the graphic in the intro, what just a couple of points off Wei Yi's record. Uh, but w he he's got a bit more um, longevity about him. It seems uh, Wei Yi's an interesting story which we can discuss another day because when Wei Yi got to that rating at sixteen, everybody was saying that this kid is going to be, and he. He didn't manage to find that next level, yeah, for whatever reason. But you have a feeling that with Gukesh and the system and the support network that he has, not just, you know, we even saw it with the tweets, right? He's got the whole country behind him. So I think having that support system is actually massive. And um, he's got the talent. And look at him. He's just, he's, he's doing a, you know, he's trying to literally rip Magnus's heart out with these moves. He's <laughs> F5, E6, so he tried to... I mean, fair play. Yeah. You've got to give him credit. 
Yeah, definitely. And, uh, well, we see Magnus just try to lock up the position by advancing the pawn. And uh, Lawrence kind of also mentioned uh, the support system. And I just kind of also wanted to talk about a story that Gukesh said. Um, mm. When he lost that critical game to Abdu Satorov, he, he left the playing venue in tears mm. and he was just absolutely distraught. And uh, late in the night, he got a telephone call from Vishy Anand, wow. yeah. who said, uh, hey, you know, can, we, can I come over? And uh, he came over to Kukesh's room and uh, they had a chat and uh, Anand just gave him some advice, showed him some games where he too had been in that situation where he'd overpressed. And I thought that is such a beautiful touch, actually, oh, yeah. that the legend himself, you know, who's not only inspired this new generation, has actually come and helped them. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, really appreciated this story and I thought, you know, it's fantastic. What a team effort. Yeah, it's no coincidence that India are producing all these youngsters when you have uh, personalities like that who are willing to help. Absolutely. A lot of selfless coaches out there who put in their time uh, for Gukesh, for Prague, who've kind of made them who they are today. And uh, meanwhile, in the game, like we said, Lawrence, I mean, it's just so impressive what he's doing, Gukesh. He does need a follow-up, however. He's yeah. come down. So uh, what would we be thinking here? How does White find compensation for the pawn he's sacrificed? Yeah, it's not... I mean, my, the first move that comes to mind for me is I, I feel like I want to take on a6. Uh, Get rid of those bishops. Yeah, just uh, importantly, of course, he can't take with the knights. So he has to take with the rook. Can't take with the queen either. Mm -hmm. So rook takes. Yeah. And then the natural follow is just to put the rook on d1 here to try and win back a pawn. Um, it's not... Oh, it's not... I, I, I'm not in love with it. I don't look at it and think, wow, this is fantastic. Yeah. But I also don't exactly know what you should be doing here with white. Yeah, um, this is one option. You're right, what else? I mean, also, I would be tempted to put my knight in the middle of the board, yeah. but... Doesn't actually do anything. Doesn't actually, exactly. Doesn't actually create anything. Black can probably just castle at some point. And, uh, yeah, also, black at some point can put his knight in yeah. the centre of the board. I'm not sure who that favours. Um, yeah, this is a critical moment. Gukesh needs a plan. Mm -hmm. It also crossed my mind that you can kind of go into the edge of the board and start trying to uh, attack some pawns, but again, the question is whether black can castle safely. I don't think white has any way to kind of set up the queen and attack this pawn. You're just not in time, unfortunately, because black has uh, discovered check along this diagonal, hitting the queen as well. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely no obvious moves shouting out, kind of screaming out to be played right now. Um, this is one, but what else? Uh, Yafank, have we seen this position before? We, we have seen it. I mean, there's only wow. one handful of games, but uh, in that partic one particular game, uh, White just uh, centralised the rook. Mm -hmm. So, this one. yeah, it's trying to do the idea that Lawrence spoke about. Yep, so indirect uh, attacking this pawn. Sorry, importantly, bishop takes d3, rook takes d3 is the yep. idea. You, you don't have to take back with the pawn. Yeah, and take with the rook. Make use of this pin. Black Knight can't recapture, and yeah, this looks like a better version yeah. of uh, the variation we looked at, just because now this one is attacked twice. You can defend it with the Black Rook, but White can keep piling up on this pawn if uh, if he wishes. So this looks like maybe Gukesh's safest option, or at least one of the most sensible. But he's thinking in this position uh, whether to bring his Rook to the centre. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Wei Yi there, and Wei Yi's still very strong, of course, but he's still the same rating, and... I think that's a cautionary tale that these top players, they still have to keep working. Mm. Um, not everyone's going to hit the top level. Um, we mentioned Gokesh, Eric Gaisi, Prague, but maybe one of them will hit 2800. Not necess I mean, maybe all of them will hit 2800, but there's no guarantee for any. And I think it's nice to have the rivalry as well, just uh, especially within India, they're kind oh, of pushing yeah. each other to, uh, to greater heights. OK, he plays a very mysterious rook move. That's a very Karpovian move, that is. That's that is that is Karpov to a T. Doesn't work, but it you know, <laughs> yeah. The so spirit why was like there. That? Yeah, that's. I mean, we all I think understand the idea behind this move. He's trying to persuade Magnus to play bishop takes bishop. Then after White recaptures the White rook on the C file becomes open, but Magnus is never ever going to capture that no. bishop. No. Very strange. You're asking your opponent to do something, but it's, you're making it pretty obvious what your plan is. And Magnus just immediately castles. In move 19, another game where he castles very late. Yeah. yeah. You normally don't want to castle past move 10 or 12. That's what I was taught, at least when I was young. But... Huh. Yeah, it's 
Oh, it's strange. Do you think that was a mouse slip by Kukesh? Do you think he wanted to put that rep on the so. D file? No. But surely you have a plan now. It does, uh. it does kind of feel like a mouse slip, to be honest with you, because... You... I think we would have seen a bigger reaction from him if he mouse slipped. He lo he's looked calm the whole way through, so... So doesn't... where did he want to put it? If, Probably if it is... where he chose. <laughs> but uh, maybe one square to the right, so the D1 square, that's the most natural, at least, by far. And why is that more natural than the C square? Both are covered by a portal in front of it. Um, yeah, so if we jump in, just to show this, so in this position... Uh, oh, we you were, said D. Yeah, the oh. D file. Ah, okay. So we were advocating the D file, just mm -hmm. because uh, next move, for example, if Black did the same as he did in the game, if Magnus castled, now, f at the very least, you could play bishop takes bishop, Black has to recapture with the rook, and now the rook is actually hitting a pawn, so you can actually regain a pawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, here you have... Probably just equal chances. You hit the knight, you hit this pawn. Uh, black can, for example, capture this guy, but we'll just see a bunch of exchanges and probably an equal endgame. Uh, so Kukesh, by putting his rook on the different square, the square he chose, um, if we go back to the game position, what's it doing here? Magnus castled. If Magnus had played bishop takes bishop, now we finally understand why the rook is here, because after pawn takes, suddenly the rook comes to life, mm. hits this knight uh, using this pin as well. But Magnus, of course, he'll never, ever take this bishop. What's your rook doing here? So is bishop. it kind of protecting that bishop then? Yeah. What? I mean, he pushes forward. Oh, this is the this idea. Is, this is the only plan, I think, to open up the rook. Um, yeah, so this knight is not actually attacking the bishop because of a pin along this diagonal. The black knight can't move because the black queen would drop. And if bishop takes bishop, now we see, again, an attack on this knight. Magnus, though, gets out of the pin. And uh, not just get, does he get out of the pin, but he attacks this bishop, he attacks this knight. Oof, looks very strong for black. Magnus is in his element. Yeah, just one... I think Gukesh was trying to be a bit too clever. Maybe he should have just kept things simple. OK, bishop takes bishop has been played. Uh, the rook recaptures. Still a problem with this knight. Still a problem with knight takes pawn. Still a problem with the knight coming into the centre. And black's a pawn up. Yeah, and... Uh... And uh, one of the things that I also noticed is that white is really lacking choice because, uh, as you've highlighted, black's pieces are very active and you can't just, like, casually move back, retreat the knight that's under attack because the knight jumps into the d3 square and, uh, well, that's going to favour Magnus big time. And uh, so you can't do that. So you're going to either you're gonna, either going to have to shuffle a piece over to protect that knight. Mm -hmm. You can't even throw in intermediate moves like pawn takes pawn and go, hey, look, I'm attacking your knight because still the white knight is under attack, and mm -hmm. you can just capture recapture the pawn. Yeah, you can recapture the pawn. I think maybe even stronger is to pl put the black yep. knight into the center, hit the queen. The queen has to use this square to protect her knight. And now you just simply capture and, like you say, Ivanka, just this one attacked. Um, this pawn looks very strong, but actually it could just drop off at some point in the next few moves. And, OK, we see this variation on the board. I think we'll see this position in a moment. Gokesh needs to move his queen in the game position, and he's just going to be a pawn down. I'm slightly surprised the computer says it's this much of an advantage, but it just must be because white has nothing for his pawn. And, yeah, we do see this position now. Uh, this is a threat. Sometimes Black can even start pushing pawns where he's strongest. Um, OK, Gukesh centralises and... I guess the, the acid test now is just take another pawn. Go two pawns up for Magnus. Yeah. Looks possible. Hmm. So it's looking really good for Magnus now and really bad for Gukesh. Yeah, I think he's just lost control. He chose the wrong plan. And it was, it was an interesting plan, but it was just a bit slow. Look at the clocks as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't like this rook ac1 move. I think Gukesh has to play a lot more simply rook ad1, try and win the pawn back. Wasn't much. Um, Black was still doing fine, but now the onus is very much on the young man to prove what he's got for the two pawns. Yeah. You call it a Karpovian move. Um, what is that? What was uh, Karpov's style? That makes so, it the Karpovian move. A lot of Karpov's moves were what, what are known as prophylactic moves. And what that means is anticipating what your opponent wants to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was anticipating... If we go back to that position, David, we'll probably have to show that. Uh, he was anticipating a trade on D3. Mm -hmm. So if he's anticipating that the C line is going to get open, 
then having the rook there already benefits him because he's already got a rook in perfect placement. But it didn't quite work here. The spirit was right, but the execution wasn't quite right. So, uh, but now the rook is free. Yeah. <laughs> and it is in that very nice 7th heaven. Yeah. yeah. On the 7th rank. <laughs> the problem is, is that Black's pieces are all uh, very well coordinated. And uh, if you really dissect the position, you'll see it's just the rook that's attacking a knight. And uh, none of White's other pieces are actually remotely involved in the attack. Yeah, uh, oh. at the moment, Black has perfect centralization as well Sorry, with the pawn, queen, and knight. Just saw that tweet where someone described me as the Susie Dent of chess. So. Uh, apparently, I'm the Rachel Riley. Wow. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> and the Rick defends the knight. It's a very English uh, comment there. Sorry, Kai. <laughs> about, about Countdown, uh, the TV show. Uh, so the Rook now defends the Black Knight. How can Kakesh keep the momentum going before it's too late? Oh! 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 <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> What's okay. happened? Something's happened. Um, it did feel a bit wrong for Magnus to play this move. I actually thought Magnus had something um, a bit stronger. But ah! what is in the air? We have well, to figure Rook, it out. Rook takes e7 is a threat and queen d8 wins. Oh, he's brought his queen forward. Okay. Yes. Wow. And actually, if we look at this, if the knight moves, suddenly there's either a knight h5 or queen b7 shot, mm -hmm. and that's just over. So, for example, this, and you come in, and you get to the black king. <laughs> what? That's what? just like so, that. No reaction on Magnus, but he obviously has blundered big, big time. time as he's seeing it now. I think he's starting to realize um, it's not actually obvious. I mean, if you showed yeah. me this position, even after white brings the queen in, I would be thinking, OK, there must be a defense for black. But the computer confirms that there isn't one. And just to show the threat, as you guys mentioned, if black, for example, takes a pawn, then white will play rook takes knight. And actually, this is back rank checkmate. Uh, the king is trapped. <gasps> and OK, you can throw a rook in the way, but it does, doesn't change anything. This is checkmate on the next move. And, this and is yeah, just he's a threat. look at look at Magnus's face. He's he's it's dawned on him. It took him also about 20, 30 seconds to realize. Hold on a second. <laughs> Uh, am I busted here? And ironically, in the previous move, he was completely winning. He just had to play knight g6. Yeah. Wow. Um, in the previous move, yeah. Just... Knight, knight g6, and uh, I guess the difference here is that uh, if knight h5 here... Maybe black can go on the attack before white does. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you just take this pawn, you threaten checkmate. It still looks a bit scary that you allow the white rook to check, but maybe black's uh, You're just there. quicker. Just in time. Just in time, but he was too slow. He played a defensive move but in this position. But going back to the game position, I mean, there we see Magnus with his head in his hands. OK, he's dawning on, oh, dawning on him. But what about if the king just uh, protects the knight? I mean, mm -hmm. where is the killer blow? If the king defends. So the rook takes knight, the whole idea is you just go, well, rook takes rook and... Mm -hmm. And now you're ready to block any checks with yeah. your own rook. Still feels very shaky. It, it feels like, you know, it is hanging by a thread, but where is the knockout punch? Yeah, so you're suggesting this move, putting the king on f8. Oof. You can also play knight d3 here. Is the queen trapped? Wow. <gasps> Lawrence, the queen is actually trapped in the centre. And the, the queen on b6 protects the e6 pawn. That's, oh a, that's a crucial thing, yeah. Oh, the, so that's the real threat. That's the that's actual the threat. Threats. Yeah. And that's where Magnus, Magnus is now doing his favourite, uh, telling himself off. But it's too late. It's too late. It's just, it's really over. There's no saving this because knight d3 as the secondary... The secondary threat is to win the queen, <laughs> um, which is quite good. And the queen, Kaya, nothing more pleasurable than trapping a queen in the middle of the board because you don't expect the queen to have no squares in the middle of the board but stone cold in the center it's just wow. over it's you... every square is covered right yeah. this these squares are covered by the white knight and queen this is covered by the white queen mm -hmm. <laughs> these are all covered by white's knights and, and these are all covered too there's literally no safe square she's gone wow That's so rare. 16 years old about to beat magnus carlson yeah, there's, there's, there's no coming back from this. It's, it, it sometimes, you, you know, like even yet... Do you remember on day one where Magnus had uh, the bad position against uh, Kema, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? And it was losing, but 
the counter chances were still there. Yep. This is just not a position where any counter chances exist. And you can see him, he's, he's really annoyed because he knows the opening went well. Um, he knows he's going to be on the front page of many Indian newspapers tomorrow. If... Is he yeah. the youngest he player? Ever to I've beaten Magnus. <laughs> I'm I'm checking. Yeah. Because he's uh, Gukesh is just 16 years old. Point 34. And how yeah. old was Prague? How he old? was 16 point something. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, Gukesh's birthday is in May, too, if that helps. May 2006. Yeah, no, so we know he is 16.34. So that will be younger because Prague beat Magnus for the first time in February, mm -hmm. was it? Mm -hmm. Roughly. Yeah. Yeah, and roughly. he's born in August. Okay, so it will be. A so new there record. will be, yeah. Wow. Gukesh yeah. will be the youngest player in uh, history to beat Magnus Carlsen after he became world champion. Incredible, these young Indians. I know, we can see the reaction from him. You know, he's just cursing. You know, he knows it's all over, it's gone. One slip up. That was it. And uh, just like a House of Cards, his position just completely fell apart. And he had 12 minutes when he blundered. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, he would have known he was doing well, Magnus. You can see he knew he was almost winning or at least a pawn or two up for nothing. And, uh, yeah, we've all been there, we've all blundered, but it is a bit careless maybe to, to blunder without really pausing for thought, mm. without looking for the opponent's moves, without calculating. Oh, he just wants to hide Magnus Carlsen. He hates the way he made that blunder. And imagine for Gukesh sitting there waiting now for six minutes to make his move. It's a shame his camera is so dark, because yeah. I would have liked to have seen <laughs> <laughs> his facial expression. Magnus is giving us a lot of yeah. uh, facial expressions. Magnus though. is going through the whole range of emotions, but uh, Kukesh, well, he's just calm and uh, well spotted. You know, fair play to Kukesh for just seizing this opportunity when it was presented to him. Because was that difficult, obviously, when Magnus made this blunder, Gukesh has answered with a move? I mean, it only becomes obvious once you see it, really. I mean, it took us a while to realise, especially the second threat. One threat was obvious, Rook takes Knight. That one is crystal clear. Maybe Magnus even spotted that, but I think he must have missed um, the second yeah. threat of trapping the Black Queen. And um, Yeah, I mean, even G when Gukesh played that move with five minutes or six minutes left, when Gukesh played that move, he won't have been 100% sure he's winning. He would have thought, OK, I've got two threats. Maybe the opponent has something, some way to deal with it. But now he sees Magnus stop for six, seven minutes. He's going to be, I mean, firstly, calculating, realising Black has no defence, but uh, he's going to be full of confidence that he's going to finish this off now. And I'm just trying to find a way that defends even a few more moves, and I just can't... There, there, there's just no move. It's just really over, and it, I think Magnus will actually resign. Uh, Immediately, yeah, I think he's just going to resign. I think he's just... Uh, so, ir ir very rarely have I seen him so irritated. I just, I just ch checked the computer evaluations to see whether there was any way to extract the queen from danger. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, he's saying, yeah, nothing you can do. Eventually, you're going to have to no, he does make play move. queen he, takes rook. He does and, make uh, a move. But now rook takes knight, rook takes as, as uh, Lawrence pointed oh. out earlier, that's on the board and that's going to be just devastating for the world champion. Yeah, just to show once more, this this rook is poisoned. It cannot be captured because of checkmate in two moves. This is deadly. Uh, this is a check. The Black King has no escape squares. Uh, thanks to this white pawn, actually. This white pawn doing a good job of cutting it off and checkmate. So Magnus had to run away with this rook, but now he's a whole piece down and uh, the attack is likely to continue. Uh, I mean, there's surely going to be an attack against the Black King on one of these two squares. <laughs> You can, you can offer a trade of queens. Yeah. Try to put it in the bank, as but I like to say. Do we want to trade off the queens? Do, do we not want to go for checkmate? <laughs> ah, <laughs> I Magnus like swirling in his chair. Doesn't even want to look at this Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, so you guys are suggesting, for example, this move. Yeah. Uh, firstly, queen trade. Secondly, going for this pawn. We just remember that the, there's a pawn on e6. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I also become a second queen? Yeah, maybe this is a good move. Maybe Magnus looks is, like a great move to me. Yeah, maybe Magnus's one trap is after queen to this square. Yeah. He'll give a check, I guess, and maybe he'll take the white knight. Uh, because yeah. if the queen is captured now, then suddenly it's white who gets checkmated along the back rank. Uh, but um, also just to show that this is just one check, the black king can suddenly hide in the corner. But Gukesh won't fall for that one. And uh, yeah, in the current position, this looks like a immediate win for Gukesh. 
queens off, you'll just win with your extra knight. Maybe there are other ways. You just have to make sure you don't allow a counterattack against the white king. Shocking, really. Four minutes, he should have this in the bag now. Yeah. Gosh. I mean, he's going to be... He understands he has to still tread a little carefully here, even though the machine is saying plus 8.3. Uh, a bit of care... A bit of care is required, and look, I mean, the kid is, uh, he's, good. he's good. I mean, he just f finds the way, and here, actually, Magnus is obliged to trade queens. Mm -hmm. Queen e3 checking h1, and there's no, there's no follow-up, actually. Yeah. The key difference now is that the white queen protects her knight on f4, right? So that trick uh, we saw in the last variation just doesn't work. Also, I, I want to point out, like, let's say queen e3 check, king h1, and let's say rook takes b2, mm -hmm. just to try and get a nice little mate in four here. Rook oh, takes yeah. h7. Well, we're probably going to see it, Lawrence. Yeah. This, Lawrence. The king is going to go to the corner, and, uh, well, since you're a piece down, you might as well For just... example, going for checkmate. Yeah. Yeah. And rook you takes pawn. And now a lovely rook takes pawn again, just removing a key defender, knight g6. And, and it's over. Seven is a mate. It is over. Magnus Carlsen loses to another Indian teenager. It's a massive win.